Welcome everyone to the True Exact Show. I'm joined here with Brian, Eric. You've seen them before. I got a special guest tonight out in LA, V Scripps. Uh, we know each other through one mutual friend. How you doing out there, man, in LA? You staying safe? Yeah, we staying safe out here. Most of the city is still locked down for COVID, but as you can see, nobody's really staying inside. But we, Absolutely we, we, not. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so um, we obviously we were gonna do an episode on what happened, the unfortunate murder of George Floyd recently. So. Brian, it was his idea, and I was like, you know what? I want to get someone on who's at the front lines and um, who, who's been to protests and someone who articulates the arguments very well, and I, I see a lot of your posts on Facebook, and I'm impressed by them. We don't agree on everything politically, stuff you post, but you articulate yourself very well, and you're well-educated, so I'd like to get like your thoughts on it. Uh, but first, uh, introduce yourself. Tell us about yourself, your work at uh, Hot New Hip Hop as a journalist, Vlad TV, and stuff before we get into it, man. Yeah, first off, I want to say I appreciate that. Um, mm -hmm. I appreciate you saying, you know, I articulate everything well. I really got to give props to It's really how I was raised. You know, my father was uh, involved with a lot of movements, Revenant Sharp and the Black Panthers, stuff like that in the 70s and 80s. I was really raised in a household um, that really prized uh, being scholarly as well as being militant because you need that balance. Uh, and yeah, I went to school for journalism, got my journalism degree. I'm about to go back to school to get my master's work for hot new hip hop. Um, and Vlad TV, mainly just writing about anything from Kim Kardashian tweets to reviewing Nipsey Hussle's album to writing pieces about the protests. So a lot of a lot of different stuff. Right. All right. So uh, what I want to ask you about, first of all, obviously, um, we've seen a pattern of social injustice against black people from the police officers. And this recent one with George Floyd, I know there's a long list of a men, um, but this particular one, I haven't met one sympathizer for the police officer here. And um. I'm just wondering out there how it is in L.A., how the protests have gone and stuff like that. And also what you feel needs to change within the police force, uh, what needs to be done, steps need to be taken that can maybe fix this. Okay. Well, I mean, out here in L.A., it's pretty much like the rest of the country. It's really uh, everybody's like, this is wrong, right? I, I don't oh, yeah, think... Yeah. I don't think anybody's under the impression I was right. I think where we're finding a lot of discourse is whether or not it's a widespread systemic problem, which it is, or if this is an isolated event or a bad apple, you know? Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, first out, first before we even get into bad cops, because we're going to give them all of our light, I like to just shine a light on good cops. Right, right. Now, right. There's, there's a real issue here because good cops can't, snitch right their superior might fire them i have a really great friend shout out josh career who has family in the uh, police department and he said you know one time his family snitched on another police officer and from there on out whenever she called for backup they wouldn't send her backup so it's just little things like that so we need to the culture needs to be easier for these good cops to be able to speak up because i know a lot of them want to speak up mm -hmm. but they're in a position where they might not be able to feed their kids tomorrow <laughs> if they do speak up and if it's between helping me that they don't know and feeding their daughter, of course, they're going to keep their mouth quiet. So we just need to make, you know, the, the environment better for them. I think the two most important things would be training and um, accountability. I think really the problem is accountability. Um, you know, the joke or that's a joke. The, the argument a lot of people is going is um, why isn't there any protests over black on black crime? That's always such right. a problem, blah, 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 blah. And, you know, we, as has been articulated many times before, it's because we go to jail when we commit crime, right? Look mm -hmm. at the jail population, it's us, right? Mm -hmm. But when cops do it, they get paid vacation. That's, that's the real problem. So accountability would be my first thing. There needs to be something in place, and I know police unions will fight this for us. Um, police are split up into squads. They're split up into divisions, units, how, however they're split up. There needs to be accountability to say like, maybe if a cop in our unit does something this egregious, that all these cops get docked pay or all these cops lose 0.2% of their pension. Okay. Something so that next time a cop has to think like, if I do something crazy, my next, my partner, my next man might lose some money from this too. And that'll help keep a little bit of accountability and training, man, we train our cops on average for how long is the police academy? Six months over in Europe. They train them for like two, yeah. three years. My girlfriend's in Australia. They train them for two years down there. Like, of course, these cops are getting scared and freaking out. They're only getting trained for six months. Right. He's got some better training. Now, I have to ask, um, do you think this could be like, I hate to bring it, do you think this could be like in the civil rights movement, how the Emmett Teal case helped out with the civil rights movement, that unfortunate event? you think this particular event could actually cause the movement to move forward, you know, like the change that actually happened. 
Yes, I think uh, the George Floyd case can help things move forward, mainly because of how it happened. Uh, once again, like it was just different. You know, we yeah. always have the uh, the uh, the idea that you know the cop was felt threatened or he was fearful or he didn't know, but this was just so cool and calm and collected, slow murder. Like there was no cop was never scared, right? Yeah. Um, so it's almost like the Emmett Till where it feels like a completely innocent man got uh, got murdered in front of the entire world. And I do believe, you know, if we look back at uh, the Civil Rights uh, Act that was passed after Martin Luther King was assassinated. He was assassinated. It was the biggest riots in the, in the nation. 100 plus cities, unrest. They caused like in 20, 20 dollars. I think like three, four hundred million dollars worth of damage. And then to be Johnson in Congress was like, yo, we got to get this bill passed. And they passed the last important piece of like, <clears throat> civil rights legislation. So I think this this will be like Emmett Tiller. This will be like the MLK riots where uh, politicians can start to be like, all right, we, we seriously need to start doing something. Right. And um, uh, just to bring up other names, like the, do you think the, the Oscar Grant case in 2009 they made Fruitvale Station of, that's another one that's like eye-opening. Um, my, my biggest – I don't want to say fear is like my biggest worry within after this guy does get prosecuted and charged to go to jail, which he most likely will and should, you know, he might get sentenced, what, 10 years and let's say he gets out in five. The worry is like the communities might just forget about it because other stuff's going on. Cause I believe the officer who shot Oscar Grant got out in like two years and it's almost like people forgot about it. Is that like a big worry for the community or you guys and that, and that like a lot of the celebrities who are posting the black square people on Twitter, they're just kind of pandering to like, Hey guys, look at me. I'm part of you too, which I personally hate. If I'm being honest with you, I'm going to be as transparent as possible, man. I didn't post it. I think it's pandering. You know, oh, great, you posted a black square today, but what are you doing tomorrow about it? So does that at all bother you that the celebrities might do it just for attention and a pat on the back? Um, This, this is a multifaceted question, so I mean... <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> oh, you're cool, you're cool. Scott gives those a lot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, as far as people forgetting, uh, our community won't forget. You know, we still, you know, we're still talking about Rodney King. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, you know, our community won't forget. And hopefully the world won't regret, which is why this response has been so dire. Because right. we're trying to tell you, like, y'all can't forget this time. Like, like come on, guys. Um, as far as celebrities doing it for the clout, mm -hmm. I'm like 50-50 on it. On one side, um, it's, it's, it's annoying. Uh, for people who aren't doing anything else but posting a black square and they go back yep. to, the, to their lives. But I've always tried to argue in the sense of, uh, for example, I'll bring um, Jeff Bezos into this for a moment. He like donated, you know, what was it, like $10 billion to climate control and people are like, oh, that's not enough. Or I always look at it like if something good is happening, I don't care if it was for the cloud. If you're taking an Instagram picture while feeding a homeless person, I mean, you're a little cloudy and you're kind of a piece of shit, but a kid ate today. So I'm just going to excuse you for being a piece of shit because yeah. at least you did something good. So I'm like 50-50 on it. Okay, that's fair. Once again, uh, transparency, man. Now, the reason why I think this one's very important is, if I'm being honest, if I date back from seven years ago even, my okay. viewpoint on this stuff was a lot different. And I've mentioned this on the show before. You know, I was the one, even the Trayvon Zimmerman case, I was the one kind of not defending Zimmerman, but on the side of the law. Well, he's not going to go to jail because of But I never looked at the perspective of, like, the other argument. It doesn't mean someone should have died. I was one of the ones he shouldn't have resisted. He shouldn't. After having conversations with people, People, um, and just, you know, seeing it more and more, I've kind of did a 180 on it. And now I understand the aspect of it. So like, I, I wish more people had the conversations about it to see that just because you run from a cop doesn't mean you should be shot. You know what I'm saying? So like, it yeah. doesn't mean just because you resist arrest, you should be killed. Because like, we grew up with, you know, a guy who is of color. And if me and him gotten an, gotten an altercation with a cop, he can't run, I can. You know, yeah. so it took us a while, me particularly, I can't speak for Brian Eric, but it did take me a while to understand the aspect of it. So even the Black Lives Matter movement, 
I was more like I was on the side of all lives matter until I heard them explain to me the people I used to do a show with back then. No, but it, we're not saying that it doesn't mean all lives matter. It's just bringing attention to the black lives movement that that needs to matter first. So I'm very happy to have these conversations, man. So as far as the black lives matter movement, how do you feel when you hear the all lives matter stuff? Is it just exhausting or you just kind of let it roll off your shoulder? Um, I mean, it is, it is definitely exhausting because it's like, uh, all right, so breast cancer month, we're going to do all cancers matter. Like, I just, I just don't understand um, that rhetoric. We're not saying black ladders lives matter more, or, you know, we're just, we're, we're setting the bar so low, it just matters. Right. Like we just, we're just trying to matter. That bar is so low and we can't even get that just to matter. Right. We're not even asking for respect or love or, or anything. We're just, hi, I matter. That's all right. we're asking. So it's definitely very, you know, tiring to hear the, the comeback of, well, all lives matter. And, you know, seeing that we had COVID kill over 100 million Americans for three months and all lives matter didn't trend once when 100,000 people are dying. But then the second that black people ask for uh, equality, now all lives is trending. So y'all didn't care about all lives when 100,000 people are dying from a virus. Like It's just the, the mentality of those people is only to silence our voices they don't really care about all lives they just feel offended and they're reacting to it and it's definitely super tiring right i'd hate to hog this Bri, uh eric you have well, anything to ask him well no i was gonna kind of piggyback off what he was saying where with the all lives matter thing i feel like a lot of people and it goes back to even the instagram posting uh, it's it's like a virtue signaling signaling type of thing where it's look yeah. at me look at what i'm doing and you know, that's ultimately not, it's not making a difference, I don't believe. And it's not to say that something like that can't make a difference. But like when you go out and you actually, if you're going to the protests and you're out there, whether you're rioting, whether you're peacefully protesting, whatever you're doing, you're trying to make a change. You're trying to have something yeah. uh, different. And I can respect things like that. I can't, I just, I, not that I don't have respect for it, but I just can't sit there and pat someone on the back. Like, okay, you know, keyboard you did warriors, your, keyboard warriors, yeah. man. Yeah. yeah. Like that's, and that's ultimately what it is. And, and with the way everybody gets offended by everything, it's like, you know, you, you have to let, I understand that you need to let people do what they feel is right for them. And I'm not one, I just can't judge someone. I can't say like, Oh, you can't do this and you should do that. I can only go and do what's right for me. And if that means going out to a protest, if that means doing, uh, posting a thing on Instagram, it is what it is. It's just my opinion that I yeah. think that action shows more rather than mm. just a quick like, oh, okay, I did it. And now I'm going to yeah. go on with my day. No, you're 100% right, man. This hashtag culture uh, makes people feel like they did something. And to a certain extent, yes, sure. The internet runs the world. We're using the internet right now to, to send this message, right? So, so to a certain aspect, sure. But when you are just, like you said, only a keyboard warrior and that's all you're doing, like... But it's, you, you know, and you know what the thing is? The thing that bothers me most is it's it's typically the same people that you'll, you'll see. And like, I mean, whenever something, a tragedy, not saying that this is less important as any other tragedy that's gone on but like yeah. what that thing in paris happened and everyone puts the the graphic of like the paris flag the france yeah. flag you know, over yeah. their profile picture paris and then strong, the next awesome. thing happens and then yeah. they put another thing in their profile picture and it's like you're not doing anything with that no. all you're doing is you're saying look at me look yeah. at me i'm on the yeah. right side of things yeah. because of my picture that's it I, yeah. I could, I could, uh, I, I see that point. I agree with that. But I think also, like, I woke up Tuesday and I was like, what is going on here? And I'm scrolling through Instagram and it's black box, black box, black box. Mm -hmm. And you're going through, right? So I think the, there are, of course, people that think that way. But I think the point of it was to show these are all the people that mm -hmm. care about this. You know, because like I, I was just saying, you know, I'm like, just, I've reached out to, you know, uh, my friends who are black, just like, how do you feel about this? You know, like, tell me, I want to hear your perspective on it, right? Because that's how you learn. You have to interact with everybody, talk to everybody about oh, yeah. it. And, uh, and, you know, I just got a lot of perspectives, just like, you know, one woman told me the other day, she's like, she, I woke up Monday and I just cried all day. I just cried. And this other woman that we work with, 
she said she's got two uh, young sons and she says she just, she cries like that could be their fate. You know, so like that doesn't affect us three, you know, the way that it could affect you. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah. Then, so like that's kind of just having these open conversations, but it just sucks that everybody is defensive. Like black lives matter. Well, all lives matter. You know, it's like, it sucks yeah. that we just always have to do that. You know, and I feel like even aside from this issue, politics in general, like it's everybody's like, this is my line. This is my box. Do not try to come. Well, I think Trump support, like it's always some shit. Yeah. yeah. But, uh, but, but you know what the thing is, we live in a culture where everyone needs to be defined by something. You can't yeah. you can't be a Republican and look at the Democratic Party and say, you know what, I kind of agree with some of those things that they do. It's either no Nathan is horrible, man. <laughs> yeah, you're either Republican or you're Democrat or you're none of those things and you can't be part of those clubs anymore. Everyone needs yeah. to everyone has this need to categorize themselves as things. I mean, even as far as like with the gender roles and stuff like that. I identify as this and I identify as that. Great. There's nothing wrong with that. You identify whatever way you want to. But to look at someone else who says, Well, I mean, I don't really have to identify as one thing or another and people when people put that out there, no, you have to. You what yeah. are what side are you on on this? Yeah, it yeah, it yeah. automatically gives that kind of like battle mentality, like we're on different sides here. Yeah, you know. V, v I have to ask you to follow up with that. How much of a role? See, I the one side. If I agree with Trump on anything, it's I hate the media, and I always have. It's not even since Trump's been elected. I have for years, and I love how he goes after him. Now he does it sometimes in a. I can't defend some of the ways he does it, but how much, how much of a role negatively do you think the media has on portraying? Here's an example, right? So when, when the riot, when the protests happen and one or two people are burning shit, you see thugs killing the city, right? Then when yeah. the Eagles win the Super Bowl, you see fans celebrating Super Bowl. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So like yeah. how much negative impact do you think the media has on all this shit going on? All right, so this is also like a, a real layer question for me because I'm a very, uh, what, if you can find the most uh, vocal uh, Second Amendment uh, mm -hmm. activist, I'm the most vocal First Amendment activist. Okay. The country was born on the idea of freedom of press because, right. you know, journalists were getting their heads chopped off for talking about the king and queen. So I don't think there's anything more important than the ability for the press to exist and to function without any kind of government intervention. With that being said, there are some horrible media sites out there. The two worst in America are CNN and Fox News. As I'm sure everybody I agree. Knows. I agree with that. 100%. Um, yep. They're both extremely biased and they're playing into people's fears or people's already reaffirmed biases to go ahead and sell a narrative or a story. And that is definitely very dangerous. Those people are being irresponsible with their journalistic integrity and their duty to this country. It would be like a doctor... Uh, you know, doing something that uh, was against the Hippocratic Oath, you know what I'm saying? So I just, yeah. uh, it's, it's, it's really hard for me because I, I, I believe that the government shouldn't be able to, like Trump shouldn't be able to kick a journalist out of a press conference if he right. doesn't like the question. But at the same time, I do see how, you know, and, and I'm a vocal Trump opposer. Yes, yeah, but, yeah. But I watch CNN and I'm like, bro, get off Trump's dick for seven yeah, seconds, yeah. bro. Just yeah. seven seconds, dog. Yeah. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I hate him too, but sheesh. Like, yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's like an ex girlfriend talking about their boyfriend. You know what I mean? They're just like, they can't stop talking about yeah. like, He cheated on me. You have no, like, it's just crazy. <laughs> yeah. So, so it's, it's definitely tough for me. I think a lot of journalists are, are, are giving. Uh, the journalistic integrity of bad name, but at the same time, we we do need these press and we do need these news. And you know, like I love the New York Times, I love Washington Post, I love uh, the Wall Street Journal, which is probably where I, the only place I go for conservative news because they're conservative and they're factual. But um, it's 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 real tricky, man, out here, and especially with all this misinformation and people, you know. Yeah, that that's one of the. Facts. That's one of the biggest problems too. Social media is horrible. They had a someone post someone posted a photo of like it was like a, a cropped photo of Trump doing something, right? And it had okay. like sixteen thousand retreats and it wasn't a true photo. So the uh -huh. person had to like respond like, you know what, that's my bad for posting it. But still there's sixteen thousand people that got the story yeah. wrong and aren't gonna care about the retraction at that point. If those sixteen thousand people 
shared it once. That's thirty two. You know what I'm saying? Yes, like the number yes, of ignorant and, people growing. Yeah, yeah, bro, and it's the same. Like I'm sure, bro. There's still people I know who still think Obama wasn't born in this country. It's ridiculous. <laughs> yeah. Like get him, Like what is wrong with you? And I'm sure there'll be people watching. Yeah, and I'm sure there'll be people watching who are just like, he wasn't born in this country, you know? But like, (laughs) stop. Just like think for your fucking selves. Like we worship these celebrities, like and and what they say and all the media. Now I have to ask you, is there anyone on CNN or Fox News you actually don't mind that you would recommend like if someone asks, Who should I watch on Fox News? Who should I watch on CNN? Is there anybody? That's a great question. I'm honestly not sure about either one of those places. Most of the time I watch them is to see what, you know, people are eating up today. Right. Yeah. Um, I don't know Fox's people too well outside of, you know, the obvious ones, the Tucker Carlson's, the Ingrams, all the, the yeah, horrible yeah, yeah. people. I don't like the Anderson Coopers or anything like that either. Um, yeah. But now nah, there's, there's not really – listen – if you're going to Fox or you're going to CNN, you need to walk into that door knowing that uh, you're going on like a horse with blinders. You're going to get mm. a very uh, spoon-fed, and that's just really against journalistic integrity. So I don't think there's anybody on either one of those sites that's, that kind of like. I'll say there are people that are a little worse than the others. But, um, yeah. yeah, I just I can't get down with either one of them. I don't want to give either one of those sites any right. any kind of props, honestly. Yeah. Every time I watch Fair the enough. news, I, I've always, like, for probably eight years now, I'll go, if I'm going to watch the news, I'll watch 15 minutes of Fox News, 15 minutes of CNN, 15 to MSNBC, and I just rotate, right? And yeah. I was doing that last night, and I was like, these are, like, not even two different countries, like, two different <laughs> worlds. Like, yeah, they're yeah, really showing the same thing. I took a picture. I'm not going to find it now, but it's, like, it was literally the same picture, and it was... It was just too completely, and, and you're like, holy shit. And you have to kind of, you have to watch it, like you said, to, to kind of go in. It's kind of like, I compare it to being the, like if your parents just got divorced, right? And they're pissed at each other. Your dad's saying, your mom's sleeping around. She's this and that. I'm like, man, my mom sucks. And you go to your mom, she's like, your dad's a piece of shit. And like, you know what I mean? Like, that's really what it is. They're just like kind of yelling mm-hmm. at you. And you don't know. And there's, and, there's, and there's grains of truth in both of their yeah. stories. Yes. Yeah. yeah. That's, but that's, that's the crazy. Stuff like, and I, I think I mentioned this on the show uh, earlier, but in the 80s when they started doing, they made CNN and 24-hour news network, they, were, they said that their fear was that they're going to just try to fill time. So now instead of saying, you know, it used to be yeah. Vietnam War, you know, 8,000 troops were killed. We tried to take over this hill and we lost it. And that was the news, right? You caught it or you didn't. Now yeah. it's like the like us four. They're like, okay, the new topic. It is abortion. So we're like, all right, you know what? Blah blah blah. And we're yelling. There's no facts. It's emotion. It's it's right. this and that. So yeah. like, it, it's that's what it is. It's a bunch of people yelling, <laughs> and they end up cutting for a commercial. Like it's mm-hmm. just it's just great. But people are like, I know people are like, well, there's no there's people that it's like yeah, there's people that like live and die by that. Yeah. Like yeah. that's they they leave the news on all day and they'll leave CNN on all day and they believe every single thing that they see on there. That's and their Bible. It's gonna it's gonna sound funny, but to reference uh, Anchorman two, when <laughs> when Ron Burgundy was doing the car chase, and they were like, "Wow, this is really good television." Yeah. Like, yeah, it's funny. It's a movie. You laugh at it, but how much truth is there in that? Yeah, you know. With him just saying ridiculous shit just to get people to watch. Yeah. yeah. Just just one specific part before we move on, like not to defend or, or support Trump or anything, but I remember I was packing to go on a work trip and I had like, I was going back and forth, CNN, Fox News and CNN said, they showed a clip and they go, this is what Trump said about Mexicans. He goes, they're chopping people's heads off. They're all criminals. Right. And I was like, God damn. So I went on YouTube and I looked at the whole thing and they asked him, so what do you think about MS-13? What should we do about MS-13? And he said that, whether he should have said that or not, like that, just those two different, shedding those lights are com- yeah. Yeah, crazy. You know yeah. what I mean? Like that's, it, it's just, so you got to watch for it. Now V, uh, I know you're a Bernie supporter, right? Yeah, I was a big Bernie guy. Big Bernie guy. Um, so, all right, you could agree that 2016, he kind of got shafted, if you will, by the primary and whatnot. Yeah. So. Say it lightly. So it's yeah. happening again, right? Let, let's They're yeah. never gonna let him win. Yeah. Now, now my thing no. is like I, I voted. I voted for Trump in 2016. I'm like I said, I'm gonna be transparent as possible. Now, what were they missing 
in 2016 that like they are do you think they're missing the same shit again because it's almost like the news cycles yeah, again the yeah the dead it's like the news cycles again are like oh his reign's over and it's almost like they don't understand the monster this guy is and they're just are do you think they're missing again they're just not learning from their mistake four years ago I think, well, I mean, I think their main mistake in 2016 was to underestimate how much people hate Hillary Clinton. Like, right. yeah. yeah, there was zero chance that I was going to vote for Hillary Clinton. Right. There is, there is a chance I'll vote for Joe Biden. Right, right. There is zero chance that, right. you know, so I think they really underestimated how the Clinton dynasty and the Clinton family's name mm-hmm. really just left a bad taste on a lot of people's uh, tongue. And, and they really went, uh, you know, left with that. As far as this year, um, I, I personally, I personally think it's going to be a landslide again. I, I, I just, I personally think. I, I wrong. I I'm, wrong. I'm starting to think the opposite. You know, I, I was always on the Trump's going to win train, but um, he's not, he's not landing. He's not landing this plane very well. Like the election's okay. getting closer, and he this year he's just making a lot of mistakes. Whether with you know. He, 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 he got a lot of people mad with how he handled COVID. Whatever, whether you disagree or disagree or not, he definitely got a lot of people agitated that might have been his supporters. And then, you know, he's – and now this thing with this, this racial issue and everything that's going on. And, like, I have, for instance, Cubans down in uh, Miami are very Republican, as you know. Yeah, and yeah. I have a Cuban friend that's been, you know, uh, defending Trump for a long time. So Trump said the shooting and looting thing, which was, you know, like a quote from a racist cop. yeah. yeah. And my Cuban friend hit me up and he was like, yo, this is kind of crazy. It's like, like, and I was like, oh, now you're starting to see it. So I think that, um, I'm not saying Trump's not going to win, but I think that um, in the same way that the Dems underestimated the Republicans in, in the last election, I think a lot of Republicans are starting to underestimate Dems in this election. Um, and I think they should be careful with that because um, there's a lot more things on the plate this time around you know before people were like let's try trump now he has a record now we see what he can do what he can do Mm -hmm. um so i think uh to assume it's going to be a landslide is a little is a a little uh it's a little cocky i think that um you should you should look at it like 2016 when the Dems were like yo we got this in the bag i think that we should look at this the opposite way this year like just just you got it you got to get someone who's going to be able to play the game with him, though. Because, I mean, I understand that it's it's the presidency, but let's be honest, with the way reality TV has gone, it's a popularity mm-hmm. contest. Mm-hmm. It's who's going to get the best ratings. I mean, him with all the uh, the debates and things like that, it wasn't about talking about policy and what he's going to change and what he's yeah. going to work on. It was all about everyone tuned in because yeah. they wanted to see what ridiculous shit he was going to say. He's a funny yeah. dude. We he's all good at it. He's good at it. I mean, he's just he's good, good at being at an asshole. He's good at it because yeah. the guy's been in entertainment for the yeah. past 20 years. Yeah. He knows exactly what he's doing. So, mm-hmm. I mean, mm-hmm. it sounds ridiculous, but you almost need a celebrity of his level <laughs> To go against him, and mm-hmm. I'm not I'm not just throwing her name out because it's just her. But like, if there was a person that could do it, probably Oprah. That'd hey. be interesting. That'd be Kanye, interesting. bro. Kanye, Kanye, bro. There you go. <laughs> Kanye, Kanye would run against now. them though. I keep telling people though, like we had a crazy white guy in office. Now let's put a crazy black guy in yeah. office. Yeah, y'all, y'all like. I now is it more what go, honestly? What could go wrong? Like, yeah, at this point, fucking like, pretty honestly, easy for everybody, bro. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yo, I have that. So, is it with with like? Do you think with the black community, like Trump embodies? Is it more his policy, or let's be honest, like I compared Obama to like Jackie Robinson, right? You had to yeah. be the perfect, perfect person. Like, if Obama was a black dude with three marriages and seven kids, there's no way he would have won. There yeah. is. Like, can you imagine the yeah. evisceration he would have faced from Fox News? Oh, look at this. Another stereotypical guy with three. Like, it wouldn't yeah, have worked. Yeah, yeah, so then yeah. you've got this guy who couldn't make one flaw, one fucking yeah. flaw. Or no else, no, but one flaw is a black dude because you had to be perfect. If Jackie Robinson talked back, then like black people may have never played. You know what I mean? That's, and a, then, great, that's a great comparison. And then all yeah. of a sudden, this guy comes in and just says, Rosie O'Donnell's <laughs> a fat pig. And you're like, what? <laughs> 
Like, and they're like, that's for, my president. Yeah, like, we're going to vote for this motherfucker. And I'm not even going to front. I loved it. I thought it was hilarious. So, like, is it more that frustration? And that shows once again, like, the, the, the hill you have to climb almost as a black dude in politics, you know? Yeah, man. I mean, you're 100% right with that. I always tell people, like, I got I got friends that are like, why didn't black, why didn't Obama legalize weed? I'm like, we couldn't have the first black president legalize <laughs> weed, bro. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? Like, they would never let leave us alone for that, right? Black people. Regardless, of, regardless right? of what else he did, that's all he would have been yeah. remembered for. Yeah. Drugs, drugs. He likes drugs, yeah. right? So it's like, he was, he was definitely under a microscope, um, for okay. sure. And it just shows Trump's privilege in the position he's in. Um, and as far as what you started with, like, as far as, you know, the black community's relationship with Trump, um, it's funny because I hear this a lot. I'll hear this a lot. If you listen to any rap song prior to 2016, oh, rappers God, love yeah. Trump. Rappers yeah, love do, Trump. Yeah. I'm up into yeah. Trump. I got money like Trump. Yeah. Mac Miller's Trump. Donald Trump. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Rappers, 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 uh, you know, loved Trump, but they loved him because of his money. Yeah. It, yeah. I mean, you know, I tell people all the time, like, rappers rap about Scarface all the time. We don't want Scarface in the White House. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> Like that, as far as that goes, but I just think Trump, you know, rubs our community the wrong way. Not even just, you know, being Republican and the whole polarized thing, just the way he handles things. Like, for instance, he, he, I feel like he doesn't care about our community right now. If somebody, if Trump even had one black person on his team, right. he could be spinning this whole racial thing to gain more black votes. Like, he could right. be like, um, hey, NRA, you're about standing your ground and rights. Why don't we market to the black community that they should go buy more guns and so that they don't have to face as much racism. They should be able to protect themselves in this great country. Because we know if it was like uh, white Catholics facing this, that's what would happen, right? The NRA would step in and be like, you need to protect yourself. And I'm just like, if, if Trump just had one black person on his entire squad, they could have definitely found a way to flip this to get our votes. But he doesn't even care about our votes yeah but well, all he needs is all he technically needs is what 10 percent of your votes and he's in i mean technically in the election yeah. right yeah That's exactly it. exactly he really i think he had what like yeah 11 percent last which time he had 13 percent of the black male vote i believe or something like okay. that which was pretty high for a republican but like you said i mean listen like the whole persona he like if you listen to hip-hop you know it's just like you're a boss mm -hmm. you rap like a boss so this mar this dude comes in like yeah look at milani i'm fucking porn stars i eat big macs you're like hell yeah i yeah, want to exactly. fuck porn stars and eat big macs so <laughs> it was more like uh, now, do you think, though, see, I think that, well, I can't speak on it, but do you think that even if I th uh, Joe Budden was on MSNBC and they asked him uh, how, how much. got that far. Good for him. Yeah, he was in a, he was in a fur coat. We're big Budden fans out here in New Jersey, so big Budden fans. So, bro, I'm, from, bro, I'm born and raised yeah, in Jersey. Yeah, man. I know, I know, I know. So, so he was on MSNBC and the guy was like, how many people in the hip-hop community like Trump? And he said you wouldn't know. He literally said, he goes, there's people who probably still like him, but they won't speak out about it. Do you think that's pretty prevalent? Like, there's, like, in, in where you're from or where you're at now, are there black people who like him but just will not speak about it? Yes. I wouldn't say it's prevalent. Like, you know, it's not like no crazy numbers. Okay. But like you said, you were saying like 13% of the male vote, there's definitely a fear. And that's why, you know, first and foremost, Kanye West is, Kanye West is my spirit animal. I love Kanye West. <laughs> okay. So, so when he came out and, you know, he was saying like, um, He's like, I have black employees in my office that are scared to say they voted for Trump. He's like, is that not oppression? Like, a black person can't say who they voted for because they're scared of repercussions. Is that not oppression? He's not. He's not wrong. Right. But um, yes, there's definitely people in the black community who are scared to show their opinion because they might be labeled a coon or a house nigga or blah 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 blah. And um, you know, it, it's tough. It's a tough line to walk. I would say if you're a black person who's uh as disgusting and boring as Candace Owens, then yeah, like we don't, we don't like you, but you know, look at Ben Carter, probably one of the most talented medical yeah. neurosurgeon. Yeah. He's probably smarter than everybody in, in the White House right now. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So our smart, intelligent black Republicans and shit, it's just, whew, everything's so polarized now, man. Well, that's one of the problems is though you have the right wing Fox News, you have the left wing CNN, and people in the middle ground. I deem myself in the middle ground. There's no, in probably Eric and Brian too. There's no media outlet for us. Yeah. I can't turn any fucking news station on. I just want facts. I want to know what happened. I don't want to know like 
what people think about it and like how people feel like it's weird to, like i saw people post this article and it's like just because it's during COVID 19 and it's like it's okay to feel sad that you can't your vacation is ruined your wedding it's okay and people are sharing like maybe you need to really like feel how you want to feel you know what i mean like yeah. people just, it really feels like you, you can't even feel whether it's good or bad you can't feel how everyone's just like yep okay i have to feel like this and it's just yeah. feel more and more it's really weird well it's like nino bless facts. said we're at the point now opinion has become content and that's yeah. a problem yeah. you know facts, like, that's yeah. a problem. Facts, facts died with jfk okay <laughs> so did you he. That was, you think that's when you think that's when it, it was what yes. the hell I want that as a tattoo. <laughs> <laughs> no, for real, because the guy, I mean, he was all about having a transparent government and having the people informed because he believed an informed nation was a stronger nation. And there were a lot of things that he was going to put out. And yeah. they got rid of him because they don't Not want Not just him. They, they, they took care of, like, a good part of his family. Yeah, Absolutely. everyone's dead. Yeah. They were like, all right, all y'all got it. Yeah, like, all right, they, because the they, they were in on so many levels in government that they have to get rid of all of them. They got to pull all the weeds out. Man. Crazy, yeah. man. Yeah. I have to propose something to you here. So, you know yeah. how I saw you I saw you post that Trump, like some comment or, uh, on Facebook, you said Trump might actually believe this, but he can't say it because he'll lose his base and it's red meat this base. So yeah. that was a great comment because I heard this on the radio show I listened to the one day. Now, everything's run for re-election in our country, right? So, like, yeah. if, you're, if you get elected, even though Trump might want to change his mind or Obama wanted to change his mind, you almost can't because you're running a campaign to get re-elected, right? So, mm -hmm. what about if they made the presidency one six-year term instead of the two-four? Do you think something like that would be helpful to where, like, you know what? Some guy can't run on a re-election, and three years in, he could actually fucking change his mind and not worry about having people to, to, to vote for him. I can't, I can't co-sign giving presidents a six-year election. That just makes me uncomfortable as okay. far as power and how long they can power. have it. Um, and I don't think that would, would really solve anything because it's not like they're going to change their mind three years in and start doing anything. Like, they'll, they'll stick with their whole bullshit for six years. But um, I know they run on the premise of re-election, but I think the real issue is with uh, constituencies. Um, of course, young people don't vote. Old people vote straight down the line. I think if people are more informed and we actually got out and voted and we can change what really matters, which is Congress... Right. Um, we can make a lot more moves, but I definitely can't get besides uh, giving the president a six-year term. I just I feel weird about that. Well, go screw myself then. <laughs> I thought it was a good idea. <laughs> yeah, but why? But why would a longer term? Be uh, well, my thing is no, but, but they could change their mind three years in, let's say, and not worry about oh, I can't change my mind because then I'll lose re-election. But I get what he's saying. But then you're giving a guy six fucking years to do but, whatever he wants. But yeah, but it's like it's to like, that. If you have two four year terms, right. you win your first one, and two years into your second one, you could change your mind at the six yeah. years too. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Or your okay. your first month and your six years, you're like all that was bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, you could do that the seventh year, and it doesn't yeah. matter. You know, like, right, like the first week, it's like all right, now we got all that bullshit out of the way. I don't feel like that. <laughs> Yeah, right. I ain't doing no wall. Fuck all this shit. <laughs> but, but see, this is the thing. And this is, this is my personal opinion. I don't agree with the way that everything is structured. That I, re I really believe that the, the president, the position itself is kind of almost like a puppet. It's put there to make people believe that you have some sort of choice and you have some sort of say and things that go on. And I'll just leave that at that. But the thing I would say, even with a four-year term, I mean, you're, look at someone with, like, with a sports team, all right? Why do the Bengals suck? The Bengals suck because they don't keep players there. They don't keep people in to develop and to grow, right? They'll always find ways to throw shade at the Bengals, won't you, bro? Bengals <laughs> <laughs> are trash. <laughs> yeah. Well, it doesn't help. I'm a Steelers fan. so yeah. But I'm just I'm using them as an example. But the thing is, they don't keep anyone there long enough to actually make a change because somebody comes in, okay. they bring these players in, they bring, they're trying to work their system, they get the coaches, and then it doesn't work in two years, fired, you're out. 
okay, now we're going to restart from scratch again. We need new players. We need new this. So if anything, I think an, a, like a much more extended term to someone who's act, who actually can be trusted would make more sense. Mm. But overall, my opinion is, it, to me, it doesn't make sense that we still follow a document that's almost 250 years old. Because, Preach, bro. because if I told you to use a computer that was 10 years old, you, you would look at me like you were crazy, honestly. Yeah, I look at you crazy now. So it is- Bro, it's like I keep telling people that, like, at what point, you know, like, whatever, like, let's, you know, the Constitution is like this holy grail of America. But, like, at some point, yeah. like, at what point are we going to be worshipping a piece of paper a thousand years from now? Like, is this a sci-fi movie? Like, what is, like, what is going on? Listen, at the end of the day, we follow a 250-year-old piece of paper that was written by self-appointed racists. <laughs> Honestly, yeah, like, yo, they, they were any of those dudes even saw an airplane right now, they probably have a heart attack. They don't know what the <laughs> fuck's going on. Oh, no. <laughs> times change. Things change. You need to update things. We're, yeah. I feel like we're more behind as the human race in general because of things like that. But that's a whole another conversation. Yeah, we, we can go into all that shit. Yeah. 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 One of the- going back to back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> With gay rights, right? They said they wanted to get married, went to the Supreme Court. Gay people could now get married, right? So it was like very, this was a, this was a win, right? Civil rights mm-hmm. uh, movement, this, we got the civil rights, all that was. So like with things like this, with the police, there's really, it doesn't seem like there's going to be that hard line win right it's going to be like you know you, you can go back and train all cops so i was just wondering like what your perspective is like how would that how does that feel like how does that feel how, what does that look like you know to to feel like all right we're getting somewhere you know what i mean because it's because this could happen in 30 years after it yeah. not happening for 30 you know what i mean do you see what i'm trying to yes to yes 100 percent. and i want to say that um you know small victories are very important i know everybody's looking for the big cake but really we got to do this brick by brick. Like yesterday uh, we protest down at city hall and we're trying to, you know, encourage people to vote the district attorney out because she, she has let a lot of uh, killer cops go without being uh, prosecuted a district attorney here. So I think a lot of small change like that, because it's such a, this is a systematic problem and you really can't, as much as I hate to say, it, you can't just change the system overnight. Like this thing took hundreds of years to build, so it's going gonna, it's gonna to be small changes. So I think, like, you know, when you're calling, like, these clear-cut big victories, I think it's going to be a lot of smaller victories for us. Um, who, who's the senator in Iowa who just lost his primary? I, his name is slipping my head right now. Um, the Republican, that, that, that was uh, the, um, the white nationalist. Uh, it's not Tom Cotton, but, is it? It's like something Murphy. <laughs> oh, no, no, not Murphy. I'm thinking of Steve Jersey King. right now. Sorry, I keep seeing Steve that. King. <laughs> Steve King? Steve King. Oh, out in Iowa? Was that his name? Steve I King? Think so. The Republican senator who just lost his, like, his name slipped my head. I don't know if that's Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's Steve King. Yeah? All right. So regardless, um, you know, he's in power for 18 years. Even even the Republican Party was like, bro, you're, you're too racist. Like, <laughs> <laughs> he didn't get the fuck out of here. <laughs> no. yeah. So, like, small things like that, man. Incremental change is very, uh, very baby steps man it's important i don't think there's going to be a hard line victory even if the cost for the george floyd thing goes away like what about brianna taylor mm-hmm. like that's 20 million times worse yeah to me that was she was shot in her bed sleeping right because they broke into the wrong house yes right? they went to the wrong house with a no-knock warrant god the, damn the dude had a legal gun because it was you know uh louisville whatever and yeah. uh you know someone break, breaks in the house you start popping back no. They returned for how they killed his girlfriend. They took him to jail. Then they figured out they already had the suspect in custody. They went to the wrong house the whole time. These cops are, weren't even charged. They're just chilling. Yeah. Um, so yeah. there's just a lot of stories like that. I can go on for years and years and years, right? But um, yeah. there needs to be a lot of small change. And I think it's really going to come at the level of judges, lawyers, and attorneys because we need to we need to get that cleaned up to get now, these cops prosecuted. was there any case that the media um, – glorified or you know in a horrible light or whatever that you went because like you take things case by case basis obviously was there any case that you went back and read about and were like ah you know what like i kind of not side with the cost but i could see that i could see why that happened was there any case you could recall 
I will say, to be completely honest, if you charge at an officer, open fire at an officer, or anything like that, tough luck, bro. Like, mm -hmm. you're dumb. Yeah. But as far as I'm concerned, we have an amendment, a constitutional right to a fair trial, right? Right. So I don't care if a cop sees you, rapes somebody, and then you run away, they still need to make sure you get to court. There's mm -hmm. no excuse on any reason to ever kill. And there's a constitutional right to a trial. So I don't, like, I, I, I don't care if it's the worst criminal on earth. Let the judge and jury decide that. Um, but once again, like I said, if you're opening fire on a cop or you're charging at a cop, then tough luck, my guy. But I don't think I've ever gone back to a case and said, okay, this guy's constitutional right. It made sense for them to take it away this time. I don't, I don't think I've ever felt that way. All right. No, that's fair. Uh, so with the election coming up, just to touch on that, are, are there any are there any things that you think Biden needs to do? Or just, uh, first of all, I actually don't. She I, needs I to like, pick the black VP. Yeah. If he wants to. Yeah. <laughs> I, li I like Joe Biden as a person. I really do. I don't. I even said to people I know, you know what? If he beat Trump, honestly, it's not the worst thing. I feel like he's just kind of like you know putting Obama in. Whatever. I have no problem with it. But yeah. like. Uh, do you think like I feel bad for the guy? Like I really think he's got like a case of dimension and stuff. Yeah, like so, right, yeah. like do you think like if he gets on? Oh boy, if they get on a stage together, oh my god, I can't imagine. Trump will kill him. Oh, it, it's gonna be like I mean, a bloodbath, man. I he's mean, it really come. depends because because Joe has his Joe has his dementia days, and then Joe has like I remember the last debate <laughs> he had with Bernie. I was watching. I was like, oh, he must have taken his medicine today. He was, he was sharp. <laughs> yeah. He was cool, and, I, and I'll be the first to admit, you know, I am a heavy Biden critic, you know. Yeah, I, yeah. He, he was responsible for a lot of the crime bills that, you know, mass incarceration, as you know, that put black people in jail and a lot of things like that. I don't think he can be forgiven for things like that, even though he did apologize, in it, um, you know, a few years ago, whatever, whatever. But, um, you know, as far as Biden needing to win, I really, I really think it hinges on who he picks for VP. I think right. that's what, that's all that matters right now. Of course, you know, we, I didn't vote for him. I voted for Bernie in the primaries, but we put him in the primaries. It was the yeah. black community, South Carolina. He won the whole South. Like, he owes us. Yeah. So that's what he needs to do to win. And I think he knows if he doesn't do that, he doesn't even have any chance. Now, who would you prime? I don't even, hold on, hold on, before we go for. Oh. I don't think either one of them should even run because past 70 years old, you're bordering on that line of losing your mind anyway. Yeah. We won't let, listen, we're going to put, we'll put people in homes that are 68, 69, yeah. 70, but yeah. we're going to let a 77 year old and a 73 year old run the country potentially. Yeah. And we're yeah. just all okay with it, no problem. But we Bernie, don't know old men sending young men to war. Old men sending young yeah. men to war. Yeah. But Bernie, but that's but, what I'm saying. But they and they also can't understand newer type of things, like like newer technologies, things that I know need Trump to be got Twitter on lock. Yeah, he does. Like I just yeah, I, he does, I, I that's Trump, all he does. That's I love Trump's does. tweets when you know he's on the shitter because it's just China with an exclamation yeah. <laughs> point. Like, what are you doing? I love how people wrote this is a real tweet. It's yeah, like, like, like Listen, China, I'm, just, like, I'm just saying just from a standpoint of okay we need to move the country forward in terms of science in terms of ideals in terms of just human decency to each other and all the race shit like you can't do that with people that grew up in it in well, the 50s 40s yeah, I mean, yeah. but but like but, Bernie was fighting for us in the exactly, 50s. Exactly, yeah. Bernie yeah, got he arrested was. during the but, story. So. But see, but that's the thing. That's an individual. Yeah. yeah that's, but, that's a certain person that's like that. Now you're looking at these two guys with, and I'm not, you know, it is what it is with both of them. But, like, all I'm saying is past 70 years old, it's time to hang it up. I'm sorry. You shouldn't be trying to run the country. Yeah. You heard it here. Brian hates old people. <laughs> yeah. Brian, well, I, mean, I think was, that I think that should there should be a cutoff for voting too. Just like you can't vote under eighteen, you shouldn't be able to vote yeah. over a certain level. People say if you're under eighteen, you don't have the brain capacity to vote. If you're over a certain age, you don't have the brain capacity to vote either. That's yeah. just right. me. I mean, you're supposed to stop working at sixty five, and <laughs> and uh, like you know what I mean. And Bernie, if he I looked it up his age, if he were to if he would have won, he yeah. would have been eighty years old taking on the presidency. 
So Oof. if you were to go through one term and then a second, he'd be 88 years old just walking Holding around like president of all time. Man. Yeah. Like, what the, where am I? Like, that's crazy. But Bernie doesn't come off as – Bernie looks healthy, though, as far as talking and stuff to yeah. me personally. Yeah. Like, he's yeah, not – he can debate. He's exactly. Sharp. Like, Bernie's sharp. Like, Biden literally is losing it. Yeah. Like, it's sad to watch. Aside, sad to watch. Aside, even, like, the president of a company – if you were to see him speak that way, like it, it's really like he's like, oh, what was there? Yeah, uh, it's tough. Uh, like it's it's just you're watching it like, oh, like who's telling him that he should do that? You know what I mean? Like he yeah. he should he should just not do it. And that's no problem. I mean, he could be my favorite, uh, you know, elected official or not. But like it's just like my grandma has dementia, and if she was up there like, I don't know, I had two ideas. I I don't know. <laughs> like I'd be like, grandma, get the like chill, man. Like you're old as hell. Like you worked your whole life, like chill. But like that's how it is. It just looks weird. Really I think no, Bernie man. was Bernie was a person that like out of just a lot of all the people that have run in the past, I would say ten to fifteen years, twenty years, that was truly for the people. Yeah, in, he in can. my opinion. Like, oh, he really can't win. Fair. That's why he can't he, win. Exactly. Yeah, no, I agree. The, like, only, I, yeah. the only other person I would say that was even close to that, and you guys will probably all laugh at it, but it was Ross Perot. Oh, well, yeah, of course. Ross is the man. We can't hate Ross Perot on here. Never. <laughs> Remember him. <laughs> no, to me, to me, it's either Bernie or Anthony Weiner. Those are my two guys. <laughs> 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 Yeah, but like Bernie, yeah. As much as I might not like, would wouldn't vote for him or whatnot. But like, he's a genuinely good dude. I like him. I like you him. You can't person. debate that. Like, he's a very good yeah. guy. Really, genuinely good guy, man. Um, but if they don't, if then he's gone. <laughs> Sorry, bro. I got a oh, question what? for you, real quick. Oh no, for me. Yeah. Go on. So, and I ask everybody this: sure, what? Yeah. What? What was it that made you identify with the party that you vote for? Um, I don't really identify with any party, uh, personally. Okay. Uh, when I was younger growing up, like, I grew up in a household, like, my dad voted, I want to say, my dad voted for, like, Clinton, Clinton, Bush, Bush, Obama, Obama, Trump. So it's all over the place, right? Um, okay. I just, honestly, I, I don't know. I just, I, okay, if you want me to be completely honest, yeah. I always felt like Democrats and just were kind of, and the way I'm seeing it now, they just complain a lot and whine. And I'm sure it goes that way, too, on the Republican side, 100% sure. But, like, it's like, bro, just beat Trump and get him out. Stop fucking bitching. Like, you say you turn on CNN and all they're talking about is it. It's like, shut the fuck up. Plus, I was ready for the – I was okay with voting for him because I was ready. I'm done with government. Throw a stick of dynamite and see where it lands. Fuck yeah. it. Yeah. That's how I was, man. That, that's how a lot of people voted for him. They were like – Fuck all this and just yeah. see what happens. Like even like it's funny. You watch like an old comedian, like uh, like super liberal comedian that hate him now. In 2016, 2016 the thing. Part of me wants to just see what happens. So, like, yeah, see, like, like so a lot of people are like, because it was at the time it was George Bush's brother, Hillary Clinton. It's like, Jeb Bush. Oh, poor Jeb. Poor Jeb. Try. Yeah. Like, I'm glad he's know. done trying to get that shit. Yeah. Yeah. Like, it's like we know where this is going. We already know. And like, if we're trying to get away from that, let's just have this douchebag just like, yeah, fuck you. Uh, you're kind of short. <laughs> oh, you're ugly. Uh, why you are that? Like, it was just, everyone's just like, what the hell is this? I wasn't even going to, if you want to, like, I wasn't even going to vote for him. I swear to God. And then the first debate I saw, they asked him a question, and he answers it by going, I just want to start off by saying Rand Paul shouldn't even be on the stage. <laughs> He's got 0.1%. And they just, like, the camera pans He's a New Yorker, Rand, bro. He's yeah, a New Yorker, bro. The camera pans to Rand Paul, and he just goes, <laughs> What's going on here? And I literally go, I am voting for him. That was fucking great. Like a WWE like, SmackDown type. Bro, shit. And he bought Jeb Bush's website. How yeah. insane is and, that, and bro? To him. Yeah, like he bought Jeb Bush's website when the lease was up, and he had people who click on JebBush.com redirect you to DonaldTrump.com. <laughs> like, talk but, about a troll. But even, even better than that, give a, that little quick story about his golf course. Oh, yeah. Well, there's a story. Oh, this is so long, man. I can't. I don't remember it well enough. But look up a story. I think Rosenberg told it on Michael K. Like, someone was playing okay. a golf tour. Court. Someone was playing a golf tournament. This could be fake, but this is what I heard from his story. 
someone was playing a golf tournament and he wasn't there for the golf tournament and some guy won it. And since he wasn't there, it was at Trump national. At Trump national. So the guy technically was like the champion or whatever. Right. So Trump interrupted him and his kid playing golf. And was like, oh, I heard you won. You're still not the champ because you didn't beat me. <laughs> Trump interrupted their game and made them play with the kid. And the wow. kid drove a golf ball. And apparently Trump knocked his into the woods. So <laughs> Trump went to the kid's golf ball and was like, this is mine. <laughs> and the kid, the kid, <laughs> yeah. And the kid Trump was like, definitely the ultimate troll. We have a oh troll. My God. The number one troll is president. Yeah. So, so yeah. I don't know if that's true. I hope it is because to me that's a fucking phenomenally yeah. funny story. Joe, Joe Rogan even says it. He goes, he shouldn't be president. He should just be a comedian. Like, this yeah. shit that yeah. is funny. Like, the other day, I was, to get off him for a second, but um, the other day I'm like working, I got the news on, and they were talking about ventilators. And, and Trump goes, oh, this guy could answer all your questions. And this guy goes, they go, how many ventilators do you have? And the guy, we don't, we don't want to give that number out for security issues. You know, just, just know we've got in the thousands, right? I don't, I don't want to give that number out. Okay. Okay. And then Trump from the left of the stage, 10 feet away goes, we got about 9,000. <laughs> I put his hands up like a little kid. He's like, I know, I know. And I'm just sitting there like, I'm literally talking what's wrong with this guy. Like, what are you doing? But he's just, Oh. Oh, man. But uh, seriously, uh, I'm, I know you're probably well, you probably got to eat and stuff because you're on the West Coast. We uh, really appreciate you coming on. Uh, do you want to yeah. do the Would You Rather Gun Your Head segment, man? I know it's been some yeah, serious issues. It. All right, so we got Sir Mix-A-Lot or Sir Elton John? Mix-A-Lot. All right. Jaws from GoldenEye or Jaws the movie? Shit, I don't know either one. Oh, wait, Jaws from, from, from GoldenEye. You're talking about the video game? Hell yeah, hell yeah. Yeah, the tall dude. Yeah. Listen to Pitbull for a week or just get bit by one of your Pitbulls? Get bit by my Pitbull. <laughs> oh, nice. Do you rather fight Bruce Wayne or Bruce Banner? Ooh. Damn. Bruce Banner. Oh, my God. I, I guess I'd go Bruce Banner, but, like. You can't fight Batman. Kill him. You got to kill him quick. Well, it's not Batman. It's Bruce Wayne. He's Same Batman. thing, like, you still kick my ass, he's a ninja. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Ted Cruz or Speed 2, Cruise Control? Oh. <laughs> Speed 2, fuck. Oh, God, Can't Eric's our winner that. from last week, so he's going last. Brian, take this. All right. Steph Curry or a bowl of curry? Fuck. Steph Curry, bro. Steph Curry, bro. He goes, said, oh, I didn't hear it. He froze. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so. Hang out with two chains or wear his two chains. Hmm. I'd hang out with two chains, man. That'd be an amazing night. <laughs> I feel like that would be too. <laughs> uh, work out with JJ Watt or label wattage on light bulbs. JJ Watt. You work out with him? Yeah, why not? I mean, I'll probably be dead the next day, but well worth <laughs> it. Yeah. Who wants to label uh, light bulbs? Yeah. Catcher in the rye or punch a catcher in the eye? <laughs> Yo, that, that was like one of the worst books they made us Horrible read. Horrible book. <laughs> yeah. Horrible book. J.C. Dallinger Salinger could suck it. Yeah. Rest in peace. Right? That, that and like great expectations of two of the worst books they've ever made us read in school. But uh, I'm going to have to punch a catcher in the eye, like maybe from the Astros or something. There you go. Yeah, there you go. All right, last one. Would you rather be Saints XQB Aaron Brooks or Brooks from the Shawshank Redemption? Wow. Damn. Didn't he hang, didn't he hang himself? <laughs> yeah, bro. Like, fuck. I don't even know. I got. I don't want to die, so I got to go kill him. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. That's a good one, bro. That's it. Me and Brian have, like, similar ones. It's like, all right, so let me switch some up. Uh, Jackson 5 or Maroon 5? Jackson 5. Okay. Uh, would you rather be guarding curry or have a garden full of curry? Uh. I need I need context <laughs> for that one. Like, <laughs> am I guarding Steph Curry in the finals? Like, about yeah, to go yeah. down or some shit? Like, he's got the ball. It's you. Nah, bro. I'm going to just get the garden of curry, bro. Smart choice. Uh, hang with Taylor Swift or be a Swift Taylor? I hate Taylor Swift. Uh. <laughs> Uh, would you rather read To Kill a Mockingbird or be mocked whenever you drink tequila? Ooh, that's a pretty cool one. Uh, I'd rather 
read to kill a mockingbird. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> would you would you rather watch a marathon of the magic school bus or do magic on a school bus? Do magic on a school bus. But that was a great show, dog. Yeah, very good. <laughs> All right, now now V the biggest thing. You gotta pick a winner from us three with the questions. Which one did you like the most? Oh, I damn man, y'all put me y'all put me on a spot like that. Yeah, because we can't judge yep. each other's anymore. Yeah. Anyone watching this, vote at home. <laughs> I am gonna have to go, with Brian. Oh, damn. Brian's first gold medal. You made it yeah. today, V. <laughs> gold medal. What, what is that? Like a double win or something? No, his first no, win. No, it's my first win. First one. He never hey. wins this game. <laughs> Congrats. <laughs> now, man, thanks a lot for coming on. Plug your social media, man, so people out here can check you out. What do you want us to catch you on? Yeah, for sure, man. Let me let me know everything, of course, and uh, for sure. I pre Thank you for having me on here. I'm sure there's a lot of people in your circle that could benefit from this. Right, man. No, definitely.